stitch number 25 is the point russe or I guess Russian point not sure why it's called that but it looks like this as you can see it's made up of five small stitches and they sit in this sort of fan shape Here's another example where I have worked them a bit more loosely and made sort of a repeating pattern. So to work the stitch you don't have to draw these lines as I've drawn them here. It's just to start with it's nice to have a little sort of guideline. So you start with the middle stitch, come up either at the top or the bottom, doesn't really matter where. Insert the needle at the other end of the line. And you come either to the right or to the left. Come up at one end of the first set of two here. And then where you insert the needle The line ends just below the first stitch and when you do the next stitch that one sits a little below the second one and then you come over to the other side and do the one next to the middle and again, it ends just below the middle one. And then you do the last stitch, which also sits below. So that's the, that's the point rousse. Let's do another one. So you come up at the top here, in the middle, insert the needle. Come up at the top of the first diagonal, insert the needle just below the middle stitch, come up at the top of the second one, on the right in this case, insert the needle just below the second one. And then you repeat that on the other side. So it's a really easy stitch to do. Just five straight stitches that make up this fan shape. On the template I have drawn some suggestions for where you can put your stitches. As you can see some of them are larger than other ones. You'll have to make them in different sizes to fit them into the letter. As you can see here this one is quite large, so that is smaller. And this one is really tiny. I think I did that with just one strand. So I wanted it to fit into the into the space. And here it looks like I actually turned it sideways because that would fit better with the shape. And I've also made some more tiny ones. I think this is only three little stitches. So if you have space like here that bother you, just add some more stitching. It's fine. 
And again, this is another example where I have filled in the outline with some running stitch. But again, you can leave it open if you want. So I'll do this one here at the top. So I come up at the top of the middle stitch, insert the needle back down. And I come up at the top of the second stitch, insert the needle just below the first one. And I do the third stitch and again insert it just below the second one and then I repeat it on the left side. Or the right side if you started on the left. So these angles can be as steep as you want. So this one wasn't terribly steep, so let's try one that's a bit more. And it also works well to line up with the outline of the shape. Two slightly different versions. Let's do a tiny one. And once you get the hang of the stitch, you, like I said, you don't need to draw the five lines. Right, so I actually haven't got proper room for the second stitch here, but it's fine. It would just be squashed in there a little bit. But from a distance no one will notice. So I'll try and line up either the ends or maybe the whole stitch with the outline wherever it's possible so I don't need to add as many stitches along the outside So that's the Poirou stitch, so enjoy it! The tutorial you have just watched is part of a series of 31 stitch tutorials that I have made to go along with the pattern for this embroidery stitch sampler. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you want to check out the pattern you can find the link in the description. And whatever you're making, happy stitching. <laughs>